the men thing, yeah? Pressure and pain. Talk to me about those words and what they mean to you, bro. Pressure, and, pressure mm -hmm. and pain to me, I feel like everybody that has struggled to some degree can understand pressure and pain. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, I feel like that's been 8% eight eight of my life at this, 70% of my life. Big man thing, yeah, is Castillo, a.k.a. the main event, a.k.a. the sniper, bruv, yeah? Now, this is my mini documentary, bruv, called Pressure and Pain, bruv, and I'm dropping an EP with this as well, bruv, all digital platforms, yeah? So I'm just basically gonna be showing you where I grew up, where I spent most of my life, tell you some stories from the ends, you get me? Like, this, this give you a little bit about where I came from, because some of you lot, you don't know all about me, bruv, but you're interested, some of you lot, like you got all these questions about you think I'm maybe from South, I'm from East, did it, did it, but nah bruv. I spent most of my life around here, Garnell Grove, bruv, yeah? W13, bruv. So big man ting, bruv. Strap in, bruv. It's a man ting. So big man ting, yeah, I moved around this estate. Yeah, when I was like 10 years old, bruv, yeah? And when I first came here, i just come here from Southall, bruv. And when I saw the place, I can't lie, bruv, I was happy. Because i just come from Southall, bruv, and Southall was a busy place, bruv. And the yard I was living in, there was maggots on the floor, bruv, slugs everywhere, and the place smelled like gasoline. That's one of the reasons we got moved around here, bruv, yeah? So, like, when I came here, bruv, I go open my fucking room door, bruv, and I just saw bruv, bare pigeons, bruv, pigeons everywhere. So I called my mum. My mum came in the room, bruv, and she... Pigeons, bruv. Big man thing. Bare hands, bruv. It was a mad thing. Yeah, my mum's from the Caribbean, bruv. She kills them things with bare hands, bruv. Yeah. Now you think to yourself, yeah, being from a new, like coming to a new surrounding, that things would be blessed, bruv. I'd be happy. When I first got round here, bruv, I was walking around the estate, bruv, in my first five days, yeah, and I get here, bruv, and some youth just walked up to me and he called me a black, bruv. Yeah. When he called me a black, he spat on me, bruv. Yeah. And as soon as I felt that spit touch my skin, bruv, as soon as I felt that, bruv, it was tiger uppercut, tiger knee, tiger knee, tiger, tiger, bruv. Man turned into Sagat, bruv. It was a mad thing. And then when he got on the floor, bruv, man started stepping on him, bruv. Man started stepping on him. Irish dancing, bruv. Man did the bachata, bruv. It was a mad thing, bruv. The maddest thing, though, like, I beat him up, yeah, but then it ended up causing a mad chain of events here yeah, because then what ended up happening here yeah, was like some youth just used to follow me around this estate all the time bruv like literally coming from school and he'd be here be here coming from here so big man thing yeah man was following me all around the estate bruv and it finally ended here bruv you get me finally bruv this had to happen yeah so he came up to me and he told me why he was following me bruv and it turns out the only reason he was doing that yeah is because i beat up his brother and his brother had special needs, bruv. But big man thing, that wasn't my problem, bruv. He spat on me, bruv. It's a mad thing. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. We ended up getting in a fight, bruv, yeah. And we ended up grabbing each other. Next thing I know, like, I got him in a headlock and that. And he was all, like, punching me and that. And all I remember next, bruv, is picking up something and smacking him in the face with it, bruv, yeah. Fight done, bruv. It was over after that, bruv. Big man thing, yeah. I mashed him up, bruv. And big man thing, I don't know where he is in life, bruv, but big man thing is probably a lot better off because I had to mash him up, bruv. Big man thing, yeah. So shout out to you, my brother. You get me, I saved your life, bruv. But big man thing, don't, don't ever play about with these hands, cuz. Don't play with these hands, cuz. So, going into school then, did you find schooling easy in England? Hated school here. Hated it. Hated it on every level because. I found that everybody here was spoilt. Like mm. I thought everybody was here was spoilt because in in the Caribbean, um, I used to steal from people. Mm. So basically my 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 grandma should work and then when she go to work it would just be me. So then I'd make friends with people around my area and I'd steal from them and bring their stuff back to my house. And just steal from them. So then when I when like I, I just I just used to, because didn't really have nothing. We had a yeah, nice house, yeah. but because a lot of situation where the people that my mum left it to, they didn't take care of it. When she came back, mm. it was like run down. So basically it was really poor. So then I just make friends and befriend people to steal from them. So then when I came up here and I saw people for all this shit, I was like, mm. rah, man, this is like the life. Mm. Like in Dominica, you can't buy crisps. You can't just go to the shop and buy stuff like that. You just, it's like money, in it? Did, so your, like, mom, did your mum ever catch you with the stealing? Yeah. So she called me, yeah. What, what happened? She called me stealing and she brought everybody over to the house and then, she bought everybody that I'd stolen from, like loads of families. She bought them over and they said, look, 
he's been stealing all your toys, he's been stealing everything. He's mm. a thief. Mm. And then all of them was just like looking at me and they all collected their toys and they went back home. How did and you my, feel in that moment? I felt like a piece of shit, bruv. Mm. Yeah. And then from that moment I never stole again. Yeah, yeah. And even to the point where I, I even snitched on my mum one time we came when we came back up here, she mm. took an apple from the in the fruit shop. Mm. And I was like, Mum, you're a thief. And I went to the shopkeeper and I was like, Stealing. Yeah, yeah, because she said, because she, yeah, yeah, she, she said, the she said the president yeah. with you. Yeah, like, but obviously, yeah. you know, when you go to shops and yeah, like, yeah, people take shit, yeah, 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 but she's, me, that's good though. She didn't steal, she didn't steal that in you. She was trying to show you value. Facts. So then yeah, when yeah. I went to school over here and I saw people, and we were talking about they got Nintendos and mm. games and shit, I'd be like, what the f? Why mm. are you not got all this shit? Mm. In Dominica, we make toys, bro. We make it out of wood. 100, 100. You know what I mean? So, yeah, of course. So then to me, I just thought people here were spoiled, but then I got spoiled in it. Do you know what I mean? I started going on a mad one. Mm. I asked my mum for everything. I was like, mum, I want a PlayStation. I want some games. Yeah. I want all of that. And then she just bought it because she was like a single mum and she's my grandmother, so she's overcompensating for everything. Yeah. So I'm like, mum, I want a PlayStation. I want a game. Was it, was, was it just you and her or were there others? Just me and her. Okay. So when we came up here, we'd stay at um, her friends' houses, So like, but they'd always kick us out because mm. I was rude and I was like, piss on the seats and all that stuff. Like, you know, you're you, innit? Like, you don't care about people house yeah so they just kick us out and then we'd have to go move the different house to different house to different house do you think you are like do you think you are more rude more unruly than the average you because some youths mm. they're doing it because they're bored like you strike me as someone that's intelligent mm. so do you think you are more rude than the average you or do you just think you were the typical child but bearing in mind you've got things going on as well like behind the scenes even though you might not know it mm. your spirit will tell you something's not right as far as my you see what i'm saying my parenting and this that the first do you know what it was i think i was unruly because I think I compared my life to the people here. Mm. So when I see people here, yeah, yeah. and people was like, people say, you see them tell their mum to shut up. And they were like, yo, mm. this is dope, man. You tell your mum to shut the fuck up, do whatever you want, man. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You can do whatever yeah, you want, yeah, man. The yeah, world yeah, is your yeah. oyster up here, yeah, man. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. You call social services on them too. You could do anything you want. Yeah. So then I started acting on really because I saw people here was moving like that. Yeah. So I just assumed that's what it was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So then I just, my main thing was just being a spoiled youth. Yeah. I just got everything I wanted, yeah. especially because at the time I didn't understand really it's because my mum just wanted to keep me out of trouble just mm. in case. Yeah, but then obviously because I was trying to, I wanted to fit in here. Mm. So I had to lose my accent here. So I wanted to talk like people here and I wanted to be like people here mm. because obviously I just wanted to assimilate mm. and be like the people here. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So then I started acting like a, I started having fights in school. Mm. I didn't really give a shit about education no more because I'm like, right, like you get awarded for being in like number five up in this bitch, bruv. Mm. Like, it's, mm. it's not even about number one no more. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. about that. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, I don't have to apply myself to anything, but that was the beginning mm. of a chain of events mm. that was bad. Now, big man thing, yeah, some of you lot know, yeah, I was a fat youth growing up, yeah. I was like 16 stone at 14 years old, bruv. So I was a big youth. And because of that, bruv, people just used to basically like harass me, bruv, and bully me on some mad thing. So then what I started doing, bruv, I started walking home, bruv, just to avoid people, yeah? But during this time, bruv, there used to be this, these two youths, bruv, from another school, and they just harass me, bruv. They just, bruv, they just bother me, bruv. I don't even know where these men came from, bruv, but they would just pop up everywhere. Worse than that other man around my estate, yeah? But anyway, like, literally, I basically came through this path one time, and as you can see, like, you can see things right now, yeah? Like, you can see scenery and shit, yeah? But when I was younger, you can see nothing but trees, bruv, yeah? You can see nothing but trees, yeah? And bear in mind, yeah? Picture me, like, 14 years old, bruv, walking through here through winter time, bruv. So it's pitch black, bruv. But anyway, these two men, bruv, they popped up right here, bruv, yeah? One of them was, like, they were both taller than me, but one was mad tall, and the other one was, like, a little bit shorter than him, yeah? So, like, I just had to mash them up, bruv, because I had enough, yeah? So, like, I pushed the tall one into these stinging nettles, yeah? And the other one... Like, I don't know, I think I grabbed him or like I kicked him into this river over there, bruv. I kicked him right in that shit, bruv, yeah? But I thought he was dead, bruv, yeah? Now, we'll talk, after I did this shit, I never saw that man again, bruv. I literally thought, I literally thought I killed them, bruv. I went home and I had some Doritos, bruv. I had the best sleep of my f***ing life, bruv. It was the best ever. Never saw that man again, bruv. So, big man ting, don't know where you man are in life right now, bruv, but suck your mums, bruv. Big man ting, yeah? And just remember, bruv, these hands, bruv. These hands. Don't play about, bruv. Just to make this, just to make this. One time I was on a bus. This is what I mean about being depressed. When I was in year nine, after year nine, I only walked home after year nine. Mm. 
mm. because I remember one time I was on a bus. Yeah, them buses and, are cold. Bruv. And you know, back mm. the thing is, people now, we live in a PC culture. Mm. Back in the day in school, bruv, yeah, yeah, it was the different. insults mm, mm. was mad. Mm. Yeah? All my friends, like I said, all my friends are different backgrounds. I got all kinds of friends from different places. When, bruv, one time one of my, one of my white virgins, he went to the board, bruv, and he drew a face, covered it in black thing, black pen, mm. then did a big afro on it, yeah, and red lips, and he was like, that's you, in front of the whole class, and I was like, yo, and he just drew a big circle like a snowman, bruv, and mm. he was like, that's, you. insults was wild. Me and my friends, and that was my defense mechanism, because obviously I'm big, so you got to learn mm. to cuss people. So when my Filipino's friend, when my Filipino friends like will cuss me about having titties, yeah, I'm like, bruv, your mum's a male order bride, bruv, fuck mm. you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like the insults <laughs> would cut you yeah, yeah. deep. Yeah, do you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? When, mm. when my friend, when my best friend from Uganda, he's like cussing me like, yo, your mum came over in a plantain, bruv. I'm like, bruv, your dad's a child soldier, bruv, fuck mm. you. Do you know what I mean? The insults were some, but people now don't understand that because now you should yeah, yeah. stab you in the face, bruv. It's, it's different. Yeah, you, but back then, the insults was real. Like, do you mm. know what I mean? Now, them shits would build character, bruv. Yeah, you have to be sharp in school. You have to, you have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, when it came to the banter and, and cussing and all of that, you have to be quick. Boop, boop. Bruv, you know, like that. Real, otherwise, otherwise, this is going to be a mad thing. Mm. So then for me, my defense mechanism became mad. But I remember one time on a bus, you know them ones when your friends have started baiting you out and starts just roasting you on the bus, bruv? Mm. And I, I, I used to go Cardinal Wiseman and Greenford. It got to Brentside, that was the mm. other school. Everybody started laughing at me on the bus because I was fat. And I was like, yo, I will never sit on this bus again. Yeah, from yeah, that crushed. day, I walked every single day yeah, from thingy to to to, fig, to 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 my house, to Gurnell, and I'd start carrying a knife to school because I'm Mm -hmm. So my friend from Kurdistan, my best friend, he's from Kurdistan, and he bought a knife from Kurdistan. I don't know how he got this on a plane. Mm -hmm. It was like an ornamental knife. And for some reason, I just used to bring it mm -hmm. here. And you see some big ornamental knife, mm -hmm. ornament thing. I used to bring it to school because I was like, the day somebody calls me fat again, bro, I'm just going to murder you at this traffic light, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't give a f They don't call me fat again. Because then it got to the point where it's past cussing. And then I was like, I'm going to have to kill someone now. Mm -hmm. But I remember... They did like a locker search and then I was like, that was the day that I didn't bring it in. So I was like, yeah. thank fuck. Big man thing, bro. Like, gotta take this off, you get me? Because I want to get serious with you lot, you get me, bro? Like, so you lot don't think man's wearing a mask. Because you see how some people talk about the window to your soul and that, bro. Shout out to the sponsors, bro. You get me? Gucci things, bro. Shout out to the sponsors, bro. So we'll talk here, like, to be honest with you, like, after I really was getting into all these problems around this estate, like, I, was, I just became a super introvert. I had a happy childhood in terms of my mum, and I'd have, like, a few friends which made everything tolerable, but on the whole, everything just felt shit, bruv. And I remember sometimes I just used to sit in the dark, bruv, and it's and and one in ten and, and I thought that was normal, but it's not normal looking back on it. When I was in year five, six, I wanted to because I was fat. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sit in the dark all day, just look in mm -hmm. darkness, because I just wanted to, mm -hmm. yeah? So then it's like, it's always been, I've always been upset. Mm -hmm. I have spurts of happiness. Mm -hmm. So then I can trace back everything to, to everything. So then I've always been a loner. Mm -hmm. So then even at 19, 20, lose my virginity at 20, mm -hmm. yeah? So then my whole thing was people. I'm just going to be around gal. I'm just going to be mm -hmm. moving through gal, da, 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 da. So mm -hmm. that was all right, but then during that process, what are you doing? You're up your life because you don't even take life seriously no qualifications no nothing because you've mm. just been in your loner shit you can't mm. develop relationships with people mm. you're just an introvert and i remember hearing a line in a movie and it made me feel like this sums up my whole personality in one go it's a movie called heat you ever seen Heat? Yeah, of course, robert of de niro course, and course, al pacino you see there's a bit where robert de niro says yeah, yeah 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 no, no, come on man gangster for that's life, it right yeah. there <laughs> Come right there. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah. Was we the, all know the line. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You Come know on. the line. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so in that uh -huh. line, that summed up everything I was feeling. Now you said you was a loner, so you understand that line. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, that line mm -hmm. right there made me feel like I'm not, I'm not, not normal. Mm -hmm. I'm okay to be a loner. The only thing I could really take control of was like my looks and how I looked. What I started doing, I started boxing. I started going to boxing in Hanwell School of Boxing in Perivale. That's where the gym was. Yeah. And the real reason I really wanted to do that is because I was a big you, and I felt like. I could I can express myself like fighting, rev. Like this, if I get in a ring and I learn how to fight properly, then then everything will feel better. And I didn't care about how I looked because I hated how I looked. I hated everything about myself. I hated how I just hated my appearance. I hated I hated 
I hate looking in the mirror. I never looked in the mirror, yeah? So I just felt like I don't care if I get bust up because I don't care about myself. So then that's when I started to go boxing. And then that taught me a lot about myself because then it's like, it's only when you get into a boxing ring, yeah? That you realize what you're really made of, bruv. You, that humbles you on, on so many levels, bruv. Because when I was boxing, the guy said, you know you're not a heavyweight. He yeah, goes, yeah. You, you're not tall enough to be a heavyweight. You're gonna be fighting these giants. Like, mm. you, you're a middleweight. I said, what's a middleweight? And he goes, that's like about 160 pounds. And he said, I'm, sorry, I'm like, what am I now? And he's like, you're about 230. So I was yeah, like- You're hella big. And I was like, so I was like, oh, so what do I do? So then I literally went online and I went on bodybuilding websites and I just read about dieting. But hmm. obviously when you're like 19, you don't understand what the hell they're talking hmm. about. So I was like, oh. So every morning, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna eat, I have a protein shake. I'm gonna run. And then when I go to school, I'm gonna have, um, when I come back from school, I'm gonna have a chicken breast with salad. I didn't realize I was actually starving myself. Mm -hmm. So then for in the first month, in the first week, eight pounds lost. Mm -hmm. Next week, eight pounds lost. Mad weight loss. Mm -hmm. And then I'm building up my mouth. So then I'm going from like one mile, two mile, three mile, four mile, six miles. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes an obsession. I could tell you calories and everything, brother. A packet of, a packet of McCoy's is two, 258. A Snickers bar, 223. Mm. Mars bar might be about two, 215. Do you understand? Mm. I can calculate everything because I was just obsessed. And then mm. I lost bare weight. Then I go back to my third year of college. I did BTEC and all that, and a national diploma. And I went back skinny as fuck. Mm. Then all of a sudden I start getting bare attention. Yeah, yeah. So now you're just clotting him with a vengeance. No, I had my first relationship. Oh, you had a relationship first? I had my first relationship. Oh, my good. first. So you started my off first... on, a, on a positive note. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> my, first, my first sexual experience, mm. my first proper, like I'd gone on a few dates up mm. until the lead up before I met the girl that I lost my virginity to. Mm. Like the first day I went on, it, it was a bit shit like, so. I had no game, bro. Oh, no, but to be fair, yeah, you're going to have to find your feet first. Yeah, I, but mean, the I realize what you're saying. You're saying your first, first date. Yeah, yeah, got you. But got the you, problem is, man, them have done this at 15, 16, 17. Ooh, they look, man, them have got their fucking. Yeah. So when I'm going rip. on a date, and you know when you, you people are meant to be like, you're meant to pay on the first date and shit. Mm. I don't know them things. Mm. So I'm going on dates talking about, yeah, have you got your, have you got your university discount card? Right, do you know what I mean? Like, so she got to pay, said, and then she never chatted to me again after that. One girl is from South. She never chatted to me again after that. Because went to pay for the ticket. And I was like, yeah, you got your, your uni, your, your discount card and she was mm. your student card or something. And she was like, no. Mm. And I was like, and then I went back to my bridge and I was like, yo bro, she tried to ask me to, she didn't want to pay half, you know? What's mm. wrong with these girls? Mm. I just didn't have no understanding. Mm. So then when I got my first girlfriend, lost my virginity, a year straight relationship. Mm. But then it's like, girl would just chat to me and chat to me and chat to me. And then the temptation started getting a bit mad because then I'm just like, yo, what do I do? Then I broke up with her after a year and it was a mm. great relationship. Mm. And then after I broke up with her, I just went super mad. At what point did you find out that your mum wasn't your mum, your, mm. your biological mum. What age did you find I out? was nine. So, so basically the moment I came up here, my grandmother told me, she's like, I'm not your mum. Would you like to meet? I'm going to introduce you to your mum. Okay, you like to okay. So when you're back and you're doing all of this um, in school and that, you already, you've already met your mum? Yeah. You've met her. So, right, so tell me about that. Tell me about meeting your biological mum. If you can remember, what can you remember of meeting your I biological mum for the first time? I remember it was time? in Southall. So then my biological mum, my, my grandmother, she said, this is your mum. And then, I met her and I just looked at her and I said, I don't like her. I said, you're my mum. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then that was just the, it was set in stone. I think my mum used that as a test mm. to test to see if there would ever be a connection with my biological yeah. mum. And I think once she clocked like, right, he doesn't respond to it at all. Mm -hmm. He's literally just stuck at the hip. And then that's just what it came to be. And my biological mum, mm. because of she, she, she's, she has schizophrenia. Yeah. She just understood like, do you know what I mean? She's just like, yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Did, did she come back in and out of your life during your school period? My biological mum's been here my whole life. So you've got a relationship with her? This is the weirdest thing about you, yeah? and it's important that I say this actually. Like, this is what's mad, yeah? Even as, um, even being smart enough to know you're doing wrong, you could still be doing wrong, but it's something that I learned. So in a way, this is kind of like a message yeah? and a lesson, I guess. It's like, for many years, ever since I met my biological mum, I had a lot of resentment and disdain 
and hatred for my biological mum. Mm. Even knowing her illness, even knowing everything, I just had a lot of resentment and hatred. I don't know what it was. Mm. It was just a natural, innate dislike for the per- dislike for the woman. I didn't feel nothing towards her. I had hate for her. I didn't like how she looked. I didn't like how she spoke. I didn't like nothing about her. Yeah, but this is as you get older and you start realizing things and you start learning. So then, like in the past year, yeah, like around last year. I had to really speak to someone to understand where this was coming from because I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I could sit in a room with my biological mom, have a conversation, and I'm fine with her. I'm like, why do I feel this anger and resentment towards her? Like, what's, mm. that, what's that about? Mm. And they said, oh, it's, 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 not, it's not anything new. It's not anything, it's not anything out of this world. You're basically, that's something to, they basically explained to me something to do with the primary caregiver. When a primary caregiver and a child, something they don't pair or they don't bond or whatever, sometimes the child can have a lot of resentment. That's why you have some men they 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 hate their mum for example or mm. they want to kill their mum or they have like mad thoughts towards their parents and all mm. that shit it's because it's something to do with that so then when i finally understood it everything came full circle and mm. then i had to basically really understand all these years that i've been having that i was doing wrong mm. i didn't know i was doing wrong i didn't know i didn't understand it so then it's like it was only in the past year imagine this of all my life of living only in the past year i had to sit down and my biological mama i had to look at and i said Every, like the whole way I've treated you in my whole life. I'm really sorry for that. I didn't understand where it came from. Yeah. I didn't understand why I felt that way. But mm. now I understand why I feel that way. And it's like, it's almost like if I understand someone has an illness, you have sympathy. Mm-hmm. But then I couldn't get that. And I don't know why. But when I understood, I just had to be like, I'm sorry for everything that I did yeah. because now I understand why. But a lot of stuff, uh, listen, we're men, we grow up. Like a lot of stuff we learn as we get older. Mm. We have more of an appreciation and an understanding. Like, so now you've been able to look at things through your own growth as a person to be Thanks. able to understand more like my mum was going through this. Like even what I said at the beginning, like, mm. oh, your mum did try to look, to, to deal yeah. with you. You see what I'm trying to say? Facts, That's yeah, me course. acknowledging like, oh, she did actually, she, even though 100%. she wasn't well. She tried. See, yeah, and Facts. like you now as a bigger man now, you can look at that and kind of be understand more like. Understand everything. Yeah, even though it's not like she gave you away. Yeah. You understand? Facts. Your Facts. grand made a decision of what was best for you Facts. in the mix. You see what I'm trying to say? Because we know what Caribbean households are as well. Of course. Going to live with an auntie or going to live with a gran is it's part normal. of the yeah, thing. It's normal. It's regular. Yeah, it's especially normal. them times there. You see what I'm saying? 100%. So. A lot of you lot know that I met my dad uh, like at a later stage. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I, growing up, I never really thought about a dad. I never really cared about having a dad. To be fair, once I knew that my, my grandmother was my mum, that's all I needed, yeah? But as I got older, obviously, I had questions like, why have I got, why is my hair like this? Some of you lot think man's on some soul glow thing. I don't know where you lot, what you lot are thinking, bruv. But literally, I always used to wonder why my hair was curly. Like, why is, it, why is it like that? And I had no idea. I just used to think that, like, I'm just straight, like, black Dominican, like, do you know what I'm trying to say? That's, that's all I thought, yeah? And then one Christmas, long story short, I got two half brothers. I'm not gonna get into the life story, but I got two half brothers. And I assumed that my dad was their dad because their dad is like white and Mauritian. And so one Christmas, um, I was asking to go see their dad. I was basically saying, like, my mum was basically being a bit funny about it. So I said, oh, mum, like, why don't you want me to go meet my dad? Da, 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 da. And she said, well, there's something I have to tell you. It's like, like, this is at me at t- age 23. So this happened at age 23 is when I would have met my dad. So basically said like, their dad is not your dad. Um, but I, I can tell you who your dad is and I can find him for you if you would like to meet him. So this is something basically that my mum kept a secret for a long time. You know what it is? You spend, like when you don't have a dad, you spend like most of your life thinking, what's that moment gonna be like, innit? Yeah. And you build it up like, ooh, do you know what I mean? It's gonna be, like, it's gonna be mad. Then when you get to a certain age, you're angry. Shit, bruv, who cares about having that? I had my yeah. grandmother, so I needed that. Yeah, yeah. But then there's still that little bit of you and that little so, bit of me that's like, I need to know what this guy is. It's even a big looks part like. of you, bro. You, yeah. may, you, you, try to, you try to compress it to a little part of you, but really it's a big part mm. of you. Ident- you wanna, it's identity, isn't it? You want to know, know more about yourself, whether you're, whether you're acknowledging the fact that you want to know more about yourself. You want to know more about Facts. yourself. So, so yeah, then, go on, carry on. Even down to what you look like. I was mm. like, how does this guy even look mm. like? Do you know what I mean? Like, what, like, why do I look the way I look? Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So then when I met him, the day before I met him, my sister, I found I had a sister as well. Mm. And she's like, I'm your sister. And uh, I know that you're going to meet our dad tomorrow and there's a few things I want you to know. So she told me about him and I was like, wow. So then it's like level of expectation has now gone down. Mm. So now I was just, okay, let's just see what the fuck he looks like. Mm. So when I, look, when I met him, I was just like, rah. Mm. 
Mm. Like, you know, when you're just like, it's like not not emptiness, but it's almost like, okay, mm. I see you. Yeah. You look like any of them. I think I look like my mum. I'm black like my mum. I'm dark like my mum. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess hair. My dad's like Asian, isn't it? So he's got like yeah, straight yeah. hair. So yeah, then yeah. I guess that's where I get my hair from. But I do look like him. Yeah. I definitely look like him. Yeah, yeah. I look like a mix of both. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So what about, do you have any kind of relationship with him now? I'll be honest. Or is, he, or is he, you said, you said drugs, you said schizophrenia. Is he too far gone? Or, yeah. you, or is it, is it, all right then, when you don't have the relationship, is it because he's too far gone or because you don't want the relationship? It's, it's a mixture of both because mm. you get to a certain age as a guy, as a man, and you don't really give a f- about all of that no more because it's done. Mm-hmm. You're set in your ways. Facts. You're a big man. Who cares now? You, you've gone past that. And then it's like, also, um, number one is too far gone. So the day I met him, I was like, rah, like he mm. actually is someone that's not well. Mm. And that's why I had to process. I'm like, that's gone now. I'm not even talking to someone that's going to be all the way mm. there. And since then, I've met my dad four times. Yeah. The last time I met my dad was last year. And then even that put everything into perspective for me. Yeah. That was another learning lesson now to, to get to my realization. Mm. Everything I thought, everything I've heard, his story, crimes, I just had to be like this. At the end of the day, I don't know this guy. This guy is a stranger to me. All I can do is come out of it and look at him from a human perspective. My my I was told my, my biological dad, he was my biological dad was probably schizophrenic or had illness probably since he was 18, 19. Mm-hmm. So he's always been that. He's always been in that jail. Mm-hmm. I don't know what led, led him on that path. I don't know his demons. I don't mm-hmm. know anything about this guy to even judge him. So who am I to give judgment? Yeah. I'm just, he's just another human being to me in it. So then it's like, I had to, when I met him, when I saw him for the last time, he couldn't speak because mm-hmm. he had a stroke. He's had a stroke, so he couldn't even talk. So then I was like, raw. I think the main thing that came into my head was it really just made me realize to myself, like, obviously I'd found out I had a daughter recently, mm. well, well, officially mine. So then I think that moment put everything into perspective. Mm. I said, you ain't got long on this earth, innit? And then when you're gone, yeah. you're gone. Big facts. And it's whatever you leave behind you will be left behind. And then the people, the people that come after you, the people that are around you, they'll be left to tell your story. Mm. Yeah. So my thing is like, all I can do, I guess, is be the continuation of his story, but at the same time, I I don't know him enough to judge him, mm. and I can't judge him because it's not my life. See well, everything you've described to me there, yeah. Everything you said there about your mum, mm. and even how you feel like your uh, your old thoughts of you'd be suicidal mm. if if your if she passed away that those thoughts have passed now yeah oh, good but yeah, um, yeah those thoughts have passed yeah yeah good because those thoughts have passed because i converted to islam at 23 mm. and i never took it seriously mm. and why i kept on doing when i could the reason i converted to islam is when i was 23 is because i was going for a mad time and i was losing my mind mm. i thought i was going fucking insane mm. so then I kept on walking around and every every time I go link a girl and I'd go to certain train stations, Shepherd's Bush, Brixton, mm. you go to Stratford, you go to different things. And every time I go to these stations, I kept on running into black Muslims. Mm. Yeah? Now I'm a black person, yeah. Mm. And I'll be real. I won't listen to no messages unless it's most most times it come from a black person. Yeah, yeah. It's like when people tell you like the youth and the youth don't listen to people that don't listen that don't look like them. Obviously mm. now that I'm older, I understand that advice can come from different places. Mm-hmm. But my thing was what I was searching for, and I'd see black brothers, Muslims, and I'd look at them, and I'd be like, I need to ask you something, why are you happy? I'd be like, well, why are you so happy? Like, mm-hmm. why do you feel fulfilled? Like, you're just here outside the station, you're so, why are you happy? Mm-hmm. And then they told me, they said, it's Allah, it's my religion, it's, 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 it's Islam, it's, it keeps me strong or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I said, how though? Because mm-hmm. I used to have like a weird relationship with God in the sense where I'd be angry. So I'm like, fuck that. Do you know what I mean? I used to hate everybody and hate everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, fuck all of that, but nothing's real. Get me, it's like, what are you on about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so then when they tell me, they'd be like, nah, man, I feel peace because of that. And every single one I'd meet would be on that same kind of vibe. Every single one. Mm-hmm. And then one day I must have gone to, one day a girl came to my house and then she left and went to the train station, dropped to the train station, the Uber. And I looked at the, the, the Uber driver and I said to him, I said, are you Muslim? And he said, yeah. 
And I said, why? And he said, oh, because then he told me why he was a, he was a, uh, I forgot where he was from. I'm not sure, I think he's from Afghanistan. Hmm. And then he said, um, he said, God makes him feel complete and all this stuff. And I said, and by this time it'd been like weeks and months we've seen black Muslims outside thing. Hmm. So I said, can you take me to the mosque? So he took me to a mosque in West Elan. And then I went there and that's when I converted. Hmm. Yeah, but then, and in that moment I felt so much at peace. I leave there and I see all my, I see Somali brothers, I see, white people, black people, Asian people, all Muslim people and all that stuff, embracing me and I felt loved. That's the first time I felt I like gonna ask acceptance. You that. Did you feel the love and acceptance? Yeah, I felt acceptance yeah. and I loved it. Mm. But then obviously through life circumstances, I lost that and I just wouldn't take it seriously. But then in the past few months, every so often I keep on thanking God for some reason. I keep on saying, thank God, thank you God, thank you God. Because of the social media journey has changed bro, my life. I was gonna so, say, you've got a lot to be thankful for. Of course. Bro. So carry then on, I say, thank on. you. So I say, mm. thank you, mm. thank you, thank you. I'm thinking, I don't know who I'm thanking, but I'm saying thank you. Thank you, thank you, God. So then, then I just had to say to myself, you know what? Stop, like, stop, stop trying to pretend to yourself that you don't feel God. You know you're feeling it, because you're lying to yourself if you, you keep on, you keep on trying to pretend like the, the blessings is all you, mm. but it ain't you. Mm. Yeah. And that's when I had to deep it, and I said to myself, you know what? Like when it comes to Islam and all that stuff, I got to take that serious. Mm. I got to take that serious because I'll be honest with you. See, I talk about suicide and I talk about all these different things. It's because. I feel mm. like I'm alone, mm. but now I don't feel alone because now I feel like there's God. Mm. Now I feel there's God there. Mm. So now I feel, now I feel like I'm walking with a path. Now I feel like I've yeah. got something with me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why religion now, I'm not, I'm not going to be on some super preachy thing, but just for my own sake, I just feel like I'm now just aligned. Yeah. And that's why I said I got to take Islam more seriously. That's, that's what I'm on. Yeah, bro. That's, no, that's a beautiful thing though, man. Religions are, listen, in black culture, in, in culture in general, but especially in black culture, you know it's a big part of our upbringing. Did you have any of that with your mum, Grant, when you were growing up? Or it weren't really a church thing or anything like that when you were my growing mom up? Was, my mum was a super religious person. That's what I would have my expected. Mom talks about it as well. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But you were trying to hear it. You, nah, were, you nah, weren't nah. really taking it in them nah, times, nah. you weren't really taking it and in. And when you're younger, especially in the camera, you go to Sunday school. Come on. You know what I mean? We Sundays, all did it, bro. Come yeah, on, I mean, of Sundays, course. Of course. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. then obviously as a youth, you're like, nah, man. And then when you find, when you get older and you get your chance to not go, mm. you're like, nah. So then I never step into a church unless I had to go to yeah. one. At one point I thought, yo, the day I walk in, I'm going to burst into flames, cuz. Cuz yeah, yeah. I have been here in a long life. time. I've been sinning too long, bro. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but, but even leading you to this point, your mum's prayers was covering you, bro. bro. Your kind mum's prayers was covering you. You've had a lot of... You see what you just said there? Mm. That's it. Because mm. I'm looking at my mum like my mum's blessed. But all my mum talks about is God. So then I'm getting strength from her. She's getting strength from God. So who am I to like, who am I to be talking about like this ain't this? Mm. Nah. Fully. One thing I always wanted to do and one thing I always had love for was music. That's what really kept man going throughout my whole life. Music was everything. Yeah? Pressure on pain out soon, bruv, the EP. But yeah, bruv, like music is the thing that stayed constant from my early life to every time. Like that's the only thing that I ever wanted to do in life. And obviously being from the UK, man, didn't really, I didn't really, it wasn't really a serious thing, bruv. Man here was doing mad IB for tunes, bruv, and I didn't give a f about that, bruv. What ended up happening was like, I realized like I, my life in some ways because it was just all about gal and then it got to the point when I was like raw what have I done I need to get my shit together so then I was going to events around them times and then the funny thing is a lot of people used to see me around them events and they like they didn't realize that that's my first time of going out and socializing with people because I've been such an introvert so then a lot of people that met me back then it's like they have like a really blase vague probably impression of me this probably is nobody about gal but they don't really know me because i wasn't being myself i wasn't myself i was trying to find myself so then it got to the point where i'd go to events and then i'd see man doing it big bruv i don't want to say their names on there because I, I don't know if you're meant to say people's names on youtube and shit but these two men they had a big impact on me one of them especially 
Like I would go to events and I'd see them do it big, bruv, in central London, big black brothers, pack up the whole room full of black people. It was beautiful, bruv. And in that moment, I was like, that's what I want to do. So I got some pee and I put together my first rave, bruv. It was called Don't Panic, yeah? And like, I, I promoted that everywhere, bruv. I promoted that shit everywhere, yeah? This is how mad it was, yeah? I heard that um, um, Amber Rose or, or Tahiri was in England. So I went all the way to a, a rave just so I could meet her, bruv, yeah? And then somehow, shout, shout out to the brother let me in. I don't want to say people's names. He let me in the VIP and I met Tahiri and I hugged her and I gave her a kiss on her cheek. And then I put that, that picture on my Instagram. This was before anybody knew me like that. And then literally, bare people was like, rah, like, da, 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 da. whatever, whatever. And then I sold out my first rave, like literally sold out my first rave. It was called Don't Panic. And I was like, rah, rah, like this is a mad thing. I did this all of me. And the reason that I had to do this is because during that time I was looking for jobs before I did this rave and I couldn't get nothing, bruv. I sent a million CVs, couldn't get f all, bruv. So then this felt like I had control, bruv, like no rejection. I did this. I was doing raves for a little while and then I, I came to a problem. I came to a problem because basically there was a shooting at one of my raves afterwards, yeah? And then this was around the time West London, they were locking off all the raves, like they were locking off every, all the venues, everything. So then that f everything for me like it literally felt like raw like i'm stuck i'm done out here now because what am i gonna do western from shepherds western yeah, from yeah, west yeah, yeah, yeah they made that tune and it blew up yeah then krepton conan don't yeah. waste my time blew up mm -hmm. and i remember saying i was doing my events them time and i was like wow so these people are really doing these things and yeah, they're yeah, eye open you see it can it can be done it can be done and mm -hmm. then i was like i must have said to a girl i've seen at the time like i want to do music and she looked at me like I was an idiot. As they do. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, already. And I was like, mm. this bitch, man. I can't keep you around, man. You don't mm. believe in my mm. shit. Mm. It's not real, but it's, you don't believe in it, mm. so fuck that. So then I then started, there's a bridge in, I have got a bridge in Elan. He lived in around Elan, but he opened up a studio in Peckham called DTY Studios. Okay. Yeah? Right in Peckham on an industrial site mm. near Afrikiko. And I was going there to try and do music, but then what ended up happening right there was a moment. That's when Seabiz, Money March, mm -hmm. Blew Up, Mist, mm -hmm. um, Madness and all them things, Nines. And I remember hearing Nines for the first time mm -hmm. and literally that was like a click for me. All I had, I must have gone into the SBTV thing and I heard was, all I do is fly birds, niggas know that I does this. Two packs and I said, nah, I'm justice. doing this shit today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'm seeing Seabiz, <laughs> then I'm seeing fucking Mist, Krypton yeah. Conan, yeah. and then another another artist, then like Scraps, then I'm yeah. like, they got me feeling like, I don't know, something like I am like, I'm higher than a kite on a satellite. I was like, that's the shit that I'm doing. So mm. then my kitchen portal work, take all the money from my kitchen portal work, put it into studio. And my friend Jerome in the studio in Peckham, he was allowing me in it because he was just not mm. charging me proper money mm. for studio time. And I was just trying to do music because obviously you want to do it, but then when you start writing bars, it's a different thing. Mm. So I'd be writing bars, bruv, and trying to make tunes and trying to get influences from different people. So I listen to Little Dirk, then I try and jump in the studio and do that, mm. bruv, and it sounds like some Indian Bangra music, <laughs> bruv. It sounded mad, yeah? I remember I did a tune called Catch Feelings because I was into Little Dirk, bruv, I sounded like a full Bollywood artist, mm. bruv. It was terrible, <laughs> bruv. I was like, nah. I mean, like, go studio, I spent three hours there, but like, yo, delete that shit. Mm. Yeah, and then I just kept on trying. Just, mm. just keep on trying, and eventually you will find that shit, bruv. Mm. But I think, even to this day, I like Nines, Seabiz, Mist, mm. Krypton, Conan, Big artists, Scraps, bro. only because mm. I feel like those five, that's the only thing I had going for me. I just listened to that religiously, mm. religiously, like all the time. It's like, listen to them, listen to them, listen to them, everything that they do, listen to them. And then from time I was doing raves, then I go to the raves. And all you're hearing is, oh yes, run the cocaine and fall, run the water to a boy. I'm like, what the f I'm like, everybody listen Shutting to this down the everywhere. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking myself, who is this brother? Mm. And then I was like, like, for real, like, he just dropped this tune last week and now everybody's talking about this shit. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And then, then you start really getting deeper into me, like, yo, these people are big, big. Then I used to have a gal in Birmingham, then I go Birmingham, and bare people talking about mist. And I'm like, rah, these people are really like, mm becoming like legends in their area and then my thing is like nah why can't i do that shit that's right that's also what i said why can't i, I said, that's right simple right. as that yeah and the thing is they live down the road like these people mm -hmm. literally london is a small place they mm -hmm. live down the road i'm from west northwest is mm -hmm. down the road mm -hmm. i have their ex things mm -hmm. in northwest i have to go hard than the link girls being there fucking random at 12 one o'clock in the morning just mm -hmm. going in and out i'm like why can't i do that shit mm -hmm. i'm capable just like everybody else is capable that's why i was like do this but then music along the way that's when doing that i'm like 
Oh shit, you just can't make the one tune and bust off in a rave. It's, it don't work like that. Mm. Here it is, this week's gas record. Don't say nothing, Castillo. But let's move on to social media terms mm. now, my G. Talk to me about what started that journey. How did you get into this? What was the first stepping stone? So, do you know, the maddest thing about you is actually someone that's really, really popular that actually put the switch in my head. Mm. So, everybody knows Mo, the comedian, right? Yeah. So, back in the day, I used to go to loads of events, mm. yeah? Uh, and, like, literally, Mo used to be always performing. Mm. And then I remember one time I put together a comedy show and Mo, the comedian, I booked him to come because I'd known him for a long time. Mm. This was before, this was just when he started bloke popping off here yeah, mm. on social because he was always a sick comedian but he was at my he was at he came to my event and he was the headline and then i looked at him i said this one he just did that video and he went viral and i looked at him i said yo mo like you're doing sick right now and i was like he won't remember this and i said you see, like you see your instagram thing that you that you just blew up and i said was that planned or was it just organic and he looked at me and he said it's organic yeah, and then like he smiled. He won't ever remember this because maybe I'm a weird, I think mm. deeply into things. He probably won't even remember, but, but it's the look that he gave me, it just put something into my head like, yo, what the fuck, bruv? It's like, yeah, it was organic, but you must've known what the hell you was doing. That's how my mind took mm. it. Mm. He won't even remember him saying that. And I was like, fuck that. And then from that moment on, I went home and I made a little viral video when I was just lying in bed and I was talking about when your girl goes to Jamaica, da 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 fresh mangoes mm -hmm. and willy. But the year before that, this builds up to that. <laughs> the year before that though, this is what the maddest thing is. I was doing, obviously I was doing raves, yeah. So yeah. I still, I still, I used to go out of a, uh, I used to go out of this woman and she's Jamaican, innit? Proper Jamaican. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then she was older than me. So I would have been like 25. Mm. She would have been like in her 40s or something. Mm or like late 30s. Mm. So then she was like my proper girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. And then I remember one time, like I got bare hair on, I'm a hairy person in it. Like, mm. so I remember she was like shaving my arm or something, like mm. my, my back up there. And then she was chatting on the phone about a Jamaican promoter. And I had so much hate, bruv. I was, mm. I was super hater, bruv. The way she was talking about him, she was like, yo, he's got a rave in this. Da, da, da. And she, mm. I think they used to date or something, mm. but she was talking about that he's got a rave coming up soon and everybody's going to it. Then that next day I went to the barbers and the fucking barbers was talking about that shit. Then I went somewhere else and everybody was like, who the fuck is this brother, man? I'm not really talking about this man, like, I want to be known like that. I was like, yeah, I hope yeah. everybody knows this guy. Then I went to my barber and my barber was like, my mom was like, yeah, man, he's the big, he's a big promoter in Jamaica, you know, he's a mm. big deal. Mm. And I was thinking, and I, that brother used to probably like my gal, brother. I don't, I don't really want to hear all mm. these good things about him. Yeah, so then in that moment, I said, I got to be known as, I want to be talked about just like that brother's talked about, yeah? The same way that everybody's talking about him everywhere I go, I want to be that. So the next year when I did my event, and I see Mo talk that shit, it's like, it just became like, everything clicked. And that's when I made the video when I was like, when your girl goes to Jamaica, da 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 And then mm. I just put it on Facebook, and then I think somebody else put it up, and it just went viral, like three mm. million or something, mm. two million. And then that was the start of it. Then I went, them times after that, after that year, I think, I think it must've been two years after or a year after mm. or whatever. But then I was in, I was in Brixton and bare people coming up to me in Brixton because that's where another one of my ex mm. lives. And then bare people in Brixton were just coming up to me like, yo, yo, da, da, da. And mm. that's when I was like, oh, I've just touched on something right now. Mm. And then mm. I just kept up going. Do you know, can I interrupt you? You know what's happened, like listening to this now and this stage of things. I always say that people go, but who you are at your core and your essence, it kind of comes out at some stage in your life. Yeah. A man's gone back to Dominica and you're meant to be first. You see mm. when you're telling man oh, about shit, the fucking. You're fucking good, you man. You see when you're telling man about you're the. Sick. You're you understand sick. what I'm saying? When you're telling him about the hearing about the man, it's that instinct, bro. It's going to be in you. You've got to be first, bro. You understand? You've got to be you winning. This is, this is mad that you, you understand what I'm saying? No, because I think that's like win. You see, this, mm. that's wisdom. That's it. Mm, 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 I've never ever thought about it yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's instant. Bro, you mentioned it, so it's in you. You understand? So, mad. But now you're bringing it to the forefront, but you don't realise that you're bringing it out when you're doing this mad. thing. You, just you see what I'm saying? Something. That's what it is. You would have mentioned it if it weren't in you. You've said it. You've said, oh, yeah, in Dominique, you've got to be first. You've got to yeah, be first. Yeah, yeah. So that means it's already in your head. You understand? Facts. Now you're now you're in this and you're doing something now. You're hearing. She's triggering you. You understand? Yeah, like, facts, facts. Aside from the saying, I know you're saying like, no, I'm a hater, this, that, that. But it's not just that. You know, I'm doing this. I can do this yeah. as well. He, he ain't showing me nothing facts. that I can do. Facts. You understand? So, yeah.
Big men thing, yeah? When girls get tired of their man, they book a flight to Jamaica, yeah? And then three months later, she's on a fucking beach with a yardy man. With King Rose this long, fam. King Rose up to here, fam. Yeah? And man's giving your girl the willy all day, bruv. Man ain't giving her no regular strokes, bruv. Man's giving her them long strokes, bruv. Man's giving her them long yardy man strokes, bruv. The mad thing is, yeah, the man ain't using no condoms, bruv. The man is going raw, bruv. Raw. Man's just busting nuts in your base ovaries, bruv. Thing is, yeah, when your girl comes back, she'll be a different woman, bruv. She'll be a different woman, bruv. And she don't want your fucking basic GMVQ willy no more, bruv. Because she's had the real thing, fam. Thing is, yeah, she'll be sending peace to that yardy man, bruv. She'll be sending your peace to that yardy man. And man didn't take her shopping. Man didn't take her dinner. Man just gave her fresh mangoes and willy, bruv. Fresh mangoes and willy. Pressure and pain. Mm. The new thing and the name of the documentary. Big man thing. Talk to me about those words and what they mean to you, bro. And pressure, where, pressure mm -hmm. and pain to me. The significance behind them, behind that me, title. I feel like everybody that has struggled to some degree can understand pressure and pain. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like I feel like that's been eight percent, eight percent of my life at this, seventy percent of my life. Mm -hmm. Pressure and pain and being constantly depressed and unhappy. And then finally just that release. And then I feel mm -hmm. like my thing is, a lot of people say that I reveal too much on camera and I say too much, too many personal things. But the reason I say personal things and I, and I like people to get to the meat and potatoes of it is because I feel like a lot of people must feel this way. It can't just be me that feels insane like this. I, like, I remember I got a friend and he used to never look in people's cars and I say, why don't you look at people's cars? Because he's like, if I look at these people's cars and see that they're doing better than me, I want to kill them and I'll hate my life even more. And I said, mm. bro, I feel like that every day, you know? Mm. I said, I thought it was just me. And he mm. said, no, nah, man. It's like mm. every day, bro. Like, I have to power myself up to go to work. I have to power myself up to do simple tasks. Mm. Power myself up at this point because I just feel defeated mm. in life. And that's why, that's what the pressure and pain thing is about. It's literally just that. And it's understanding where somebody come from to see the to think because like I said I'm not a perfect person I've been a horrible horrible person in the past I've got a good heart but horrible person in the past said a lot of horrible things to people been a horrible mm. person but that's why it's taken me a long time to find peace and I just feel like there's a lot of people that's going through that and you just need a little bit brother I'm telling and, you and then and then yeah that's that's one of the main things yeah I hear you and bro see like how you're talking there and you've done a lot of things you've been a horrible person you've done this mm. awareness and acceptance of this is going to help you move forward. Mm. You understand? You're still a young man, theoretically. You mm. understand what I'm saying to you? We're, we're always evolving. Yeah, facts. So you're still evolving. You're, you're, you're discovering yourself. You're discovering a more understanding of your relationships and stuff. Facts. And you're at a greater space. You said you found a percentage of happiness that you've never had before. Facts. So the future might bring you even more happiness. You understand facts. what I'm saying to you? So talk to me about the future, what you envision for yourself, and what, what your plans are, moving forward. What's next my for plans, the big man? One of my biggest plans, honestly speaking, mm -hmm. yeah, and then I won't, this will be the last time I really speak yeah, on it. Yeah, go on. Just give a little piece of So away. basically, like, so obviously a lot of people know that recently I've got a daughter. Yes, yeah? that's why so, I was. So that is, to me, now here's the thing. It took me a long time to accept that because I never wanted children. My whole thing was my mum. And when my mum passes, when I off myself, mm. and then that's the end of that chapter. Yeah, but we moved, we've moved on. Yeah, so chapter. then it took me a long time to come to grips of having a child because I just never wanted a child mm -hmm. and through the circumstances whatever it is what it is mm -hmm. but we're here now mm -hmm. and it took me a long time to get to that point and then my thing was it took me a lot of level understanding to really understand that like I had to really deep I was like during the Black Lives Matter time I was all seeing like black women on the front line doing all these things and I was mm -hmm. like that's so good black people black people I'm like I love black people it's what I've known my whole life mm -hmm. my mum everything so then I said how can I be talking about this Black Lives Matter stuff Black lives, black people. When I got a daughter, that I'm not even checking for. That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. Mm -hmm. That's why I had to do the paternity test, and it still took me a long time because I'm not, I'm not a, I'm a very detached person. Mm -hmm. So then I had to learn that. Yeah. So then I had to deep, and I said to myself, ultimately, in spirituality, I'm a spiritual person. That's why I go back to the God thing. Mm -hmm. My mum's birthday is the day after mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How a coincidence could be that my daughter's birthday is the day before mine? I can't even deny I can't even deny spirituality it was meant to be so like my purpose in life now that I feel like I've gone to this point yeah is to just be what I didn't have mm -hmm. so my mum is everything to me so my mum is my best friend I want to be obviously a father and that person for my daughter mm -hmm. do you understand like yes, so now sir. I really feel like I do have purpose you do 
Do you understand? Mm-hmm. But then it's not just, it's, it's bigger than me now. So then everything I'm really doing right now is the same thing my grandmother did for me. I was going to say that to you, my to her. I was going to say that to you. And, it's unfo- mm. and it's, the maddest thing is, it's somewhat of a similar situation to how I came to be. Mm-hmm. Not the same, but similar. And I said to myself, that's something right there. And I said, mm. I said, I'm pretty sure if my dad could go back and change his life, he would. Mm-hmm. But obviously, mm-hmm. that's, that's what you're blessed with. But the difference is, like I said, pressure and pain. Don't go through all of that for it not to mean nothing. That's right. So then that's why I've got to pass that down and show a different way. Mm-hmm. Because then I, you can't keep that shit going on because then you pass it to the next person and I'm a spiritual person and like I said, black people, we call all this stuff with our ancestors and all this shit and it passes through, bro. And I don't want to pass I'm that through you, to bro, You else. said it yourself. You said earlier on, your mum dis- passed on 83 years of knowledge into you. Facts. She's done it for a reason. She didn't do it just for it to end when Facts. she goes. Now it's for you to continue what the work that she and the legacy. Facts. You understand? And then when you ask me for the future, that's what the future is. Right, Everything bro. there. I feel you, my bro. Do you know what I mean? So then, social media is social media and it's, it's nice. Do you know what I mean? But at yeah, the same yeah. time, it's the social media and it's not fucking real. Yeah, that's right. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. the same way people know you today, they don't give a fuck tomorrow. That shit don't matter. Mm-hmm. The shit that matters is this real life. Yeah, so yeah. when I have a daughter and then she grows up and she's like, ah, oh. same way I wanted to meet my dad and be like, yo. And I got bare money. My dad's this, my dad is this, my dad is this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I couldn't do that shit, which is fine. And now all my daughters will be like, oh, my dad's this, my dad's this. My dad can help me. My dad can do this. And he comes from a different lineage. And yeah, even yeah. if she sees my dad's lineage and sees the mad thing there. Yeah, yeah. And then she sees my mum and then she sees the beauty in there. And it's that mixture with me. Come on, my bro. And then you got her. Yeah. And that's what it is to me. Yeah. All right, my bro. That's a good space to wrap it up, bro. Big man it's thing. It's been a big man thing interview. My brother. Love. I appreciate you calling you know, me out yeah. to date. No, bruv, bro. I got I got a good, bruv, big man thing. Shout out to Pound Sterling, bruv. This brother just tapped into some other shit. He's <laughs> different. <laughs> different. Do you know that's wisdom, get, man? I gear joke as well at the same time. I don't know if you're still filming. Because I've watched a couple bits of you. I don't know if it's on purpose or by accident. Go on. But there's significance to the 20p that's on the floor there between us. I don't know how it's ended up there, bro. But I remember you saying something about you and remember you and your girl having an argument on the rare tip. See what I'm saying? She, but we move. So Stop this. <laughs> you remember? You know no, what I'm no, talking about, innit? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how that's got there, no, but, but I've been staring at it a couple no. times, like while we've been talking. Right. You and understand? Is, do you know? What's, do you know? What's scary. Mm. You know when I'm a spiritual person, but you know when somebody starts talking like signs and seeing things, mm, mm, I'm mm, on mm. there, and it's mm. I'm gonna leave, and you know I'm gonna think about this for the rest of the week. Yeah, yeah. Them, them, them man come with a bag of chat, not me. I put it in motion. Came back, wrestle foes. Carty's got girl busting it open. Can't wipe them, it's long. Know that sniper, leaving it smoking. Smashing past them girl. Told them men don't deal with emotions. Baby, they're looking all fabulous. Thinking this, how will I manage it? Sip on the Maggie and beat up the pussy. And I got the ray in the cabinet. They got the belly and damage it. Looking at eye and she's loving it. Think that it's deeper than meeting and beating. Just cause I told them my government. Black and Filipino. She hot like jalapeno.